So we've talked about this in the, the preface of incident management, but problem management is the next segue in terms of controlling the environment mm -hmm. and understanding trends that are happening from incident management. And the great thing about problem management is with problem management, you have the ability to be reactive to a trend. So a flood of stuff happens, and exchange goes down, and people can't access email. That's a good example of a flooded reactive trend. Or you have the ability to be proactive and understand, OK, well, I have a bunch of incidents that have happened over a certain amount of time. Maybe there's a commonality here. There's some root cause here that I need to look at from an operations perspective and be able to actually solve that and take that out of the actual operations issues that plague my business. So we're going to go through both scenarios here. And what we're going to do here is we're going to jump straight into the actual product and walk you through how incident management segues into problem management and talk about all the features in between that. So when we come back to the work items area, you'll see here that right next to incident management lives problem management. And although problem management is its own domain, it does have its own views. You can actually see different problems and my, my active problems versus closed problems, things like that. Um, the important thing to remember here is that it generally typify, or starts with an actual incident. And you actually trend off those incidents typically, typically. So we're actually going to start there. And what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to start showing you the real power of the views and how you actually can use this trending data. So what I'll do here is I'll go into all incidents. And we'll just take a look at all of the incidents in the system. And when I pull this up, I'll see that in my particular system, again, it's just a demo environment, but I have 225 overall incidents. And let's say that I want to start identifying trends, maybe against classification category, maybe against configuration items, whatever I want. This view structure is very easy to manipulate the data and be able to actually identify those trends. So if I right click here, you'll see that I can actually group by different elements in this view. And I can actually click on classification category. And when I do that, you'll see every single incident that's been categorized by a certain classification category. And if I move over to the right here, you'll see what those group by's are. So I have a lot of configuration data problem issues. I'll eventually see a lot of email problems, enterprise application problems, so on and so forth. So let's say that I'm having a bunch of email problems, and I want to actually identify this as a problem in my business. So what I'm able to do here is I'm actually able to select all of those and create a problem via the task menu that actually sucks up those incidents into a parent problem against my business. And what you'll see here, when this problem is created, on the Related Items tab, I will have every single one of those incidents that's ever been created for that particular category automatically associated. So this is an example of being proactive against the business. I'm identifying trends, and I'm being proactive from a problem management perspective. Let's say, in the reverse, I've had a flood of issues that have come in, and I need to be able to create a problem based upon that. So this is a reactionary example, right? So what I'll do here is, in my all incidents view, I'll just type the word active to bring all the active incidents forward. So I'll type active here, and I'll, and I'll see that here. And then I'll do the same process as I did before. I'll right click, I'll group by classification category, and I'll see all those um, incidents that have a certain classification category. That are active. That yeah. are active. That okay. are active. So I have a flood of stuff coming in, and now I'm actually want to be reactive and understand what that, that problem is here. So in the same vein, I can see I have a lot of enterprise application problems. I still have seven email problems, which is kind of high for my business. So I'm actually going to highlight those seven here, and I'm actually going to create a problem against those particular seven. So if you wanted to, let's say, you mentioned you did a quick search there and typed active. Let's say you wanted all iPhone issues that oh, were iPhone. active. Oh, I mean, come on now. <laughs> you mentioned the <laughs> iPhone. So, no. Hey, we're, we, hey people centric IT, right? We're all true. about that everything, is, right? I'm using Windows 7 yeah, still, sorry. The, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. But so is there a way to do that as far as the views? Absolutely. So what you saw here is from, from a view perspective, I typed the word active. Once I actually start filtering data, I can add criteria here. So if I wanted to add criteria to say the classification category may contain the word email, I can do that. And I get a very specific view that shows me that data. And this is what I love about Service Manager and the view structure. This happens in Config Manager, Ops Manager, Service Manager. This view structure is very palatable to reporting against, mining data, understanding what's going on in the business, and then doing stuff with that data in this scenario, creating a problem. Do I still have that problem open? I think I do. Those are my, those are my related okay, incidents. So we'll we continue go. to go here. Yep. So problem management, although visually makes a little bit of sense around incident management, or sorry, it looks a little bit similar to incident management, there are some very key differences here. 
So for my problem here, I'm going to categorize it as an exchange issue. So exchange is getting flooded uh, because iPhone 6.1 <laughs> update is causing <laughs> issues. <laughs> The, uh, the maps are not what, working. What? Oh, oh, no, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. There you I go. Could, there you go. <laughs> All the exchange people will actually know what I'm talking yeah. about here as well. Um, I can assign this to an individual analyst, so I'll assign this to Scott here. Um, I can categorize this. Now, this is a different category than incident management because problem management has its own set of classification that we need to be aware of here. So I'll, uh, I'll categorize this as an application. I'll give it an impact and urgency. We saw this before from a problem management perspective, or sorry, an incident management perspective. So my impact to the business is high. My urgency in this particular scenario is high as well because exchange is getting flooded and we need to fix this as immediately as possible. Right. However, we need, to, we need to actually fix that. We also have the ability uh, to bring in affected services and affected items from the business. So we haven't chatted about this yet, but Operations manager is feeding in all my distributed applications, showing me all my services that are provided to the business. And I have the ability to say, okay, well, operations manager is giving me that exchange service, and exchange is currently the issue at hand here, so I'll actually associate exchange as a distributed application to this problem. And again, six months from now, we'll understand how many problems are actually being affected by exchange. So a really good example of how we can trend and report. You also notice here that I had two configuration items that came from the incident. So those actually got sucked into the problem as well. And you can see here that I'm able to use that data to be able to trend as well from a problem perspective. From a related item side, we've, we've shown you the ability to correlate incidents. So we automatically brought that data into the actual problem here. If I wanted to relate incidents after the fact, I have the ability to do that as well. You'll see here, if I highlight on a particular incident, I can actually link this to an existing problem and actually automatically start aggregating that data as more incidents come into the actual business. Mm -hmm. I can add other configuration items, services, and people as it pertains to this particular problem. I can add other knowledge articles. If there is a knowledge article that fixes this particular issue, which we'll talk about in the next segment, I, I have the ability to do that. I can attach files that maybe correlate to the actual problem itself. From a resolution perspective, I'm actually going to start capturing data that really affects the problem. So I have the ability to provide an error description. Um, exchange is getting flooded due to, oops, I can type, due to, and no, service manager does not have a spell checker no. yet. Okay. <laughs> uh, getting flooded due to um, iPhone update. Uh, current workaround is um, wipe everyone's iPhone. No problem. No problem. Yeah. We all have access They'll to They'll be sync. happy. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, I can actually say this is a known error because this is something that actually Apple had an issue with and they had to provide an update, so, so it is a known error. Um, we don't need to provide a, a review for this because we know it's a known error, but maybe this is a major problem that happens consistently in the business. We need to tick this off as a, as a major problem and say, okay, well, when we actually review all of our problems, we want to identify those ones that are major and say, operationally, why is this happening? in our business. Yeah, kind of a, hey, we have a weekly meeting or a daily scrub of what's going on. We're going to flag that one as a, as a one to go exactly. through. Yeah. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Um, and then at the end of the day, after you've actually categorized a problem, provided all the information around a problem, uh, you have the ability to resolve a problem. So I can come here from a task perspective, and we saw this in incident management, all those tasks in my, uh, in my task area, and I can resolve this particular problem. Oops. I'll have to actually create it first. Let me, let me create it and then we can actually resolve it here. <laughs> we'll go to my problem area. <clears throat> and we'll see that I have my exchange issue here. And what we'll do is we'll come in here and we'll resolve this issue. We'll see that the, the problem has actually been resolved. And when we do that, what happens here at the bottom is we actually get the ability to provide resolution details. And this is actually a big feature in, within Service Manager. You'll see here that I can check this box. I don't have to, but I can check this box that says, if there are incidents assigned to this particular problem, which in this scenario there are, there's about seven or eight, do I want to auto-resolve those incidents? And why that's important is because you can actually auto-resolve those incidents and then send a nice little personal email to each one of those customers and say, hey, we worked really hard on your incident. It's been resolved. Let us know if there's any other issues that can be at hand. We don't have to go to each incident and resolve it. It's a mass way to actually resolve right. all those incidents. So it's a, it's a really good, one good scenario where you should move an incident into a problem as opposed to just close the incident out one at a time. Exactly, right? exactly, yeah. absolutely. 
I can provide a resolution category just like I could an in incident management. So I have the ability to categorize this and understand what the root impact of this particular problem was. And we'll say this is an application um, problem. And then the resolution description here actually gets passed to the incident as well. So if you're communicating to the customers, hey, this is how we resolve this particular issue, you want to be really careful what you put in here. You don't want to say, ah, uh, customers are dumb, da 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 da. You mm -hmm. want to be very friendly. We can say, we identified the root cause as an Apple update. Please update to new version of iOS, and it will be fixed. So on and so forth, right? Yep. You can pass this to the incident automatically and then send that to the customer. A nice friendly note to be able to have that go. just friendly communication. Another way, strong way to use notifications and email within Service Manager. So that's a really nice overview of problem management. And what we're going to do now is go into knowledge management as the next segment. All right, let's do it.